Welcome to the land of digital enchantment on the first course dedicated to artificial intelligence where we will create graphics using stable diffusion. It is nothing more than an open source model with a license for commercial use, as free as grandma's advice. It is a worthy rival for mid-journey generators. Interestingly, due to its open nature, we will find unlimited censorship versions. The development of the stable diffusion model was handed over to the community, creating hundreds of variants, each specializing in a different style. It is worth adding that some stable diffusion variants may have less commercial freedom. It all depends on the database on which they were trained. Each model has its own description that we should familiarize ourselves with before starting work. Let's focus on two open source interfaces. Automatic 11.11, .11, which is like an application, everything in one, and Confi UI. We will explore its secrets in the next courses. Automatic 11.11 .11 can be installed on a computer and generate graphics for free, but the obstacle may be the graphics card. A key parameter is the amount of VRAM in the card, not to be confused with RAM. VRAM is especially exploited by artificial intelligence. Currently, two stable diffusion models are being used, version 1.5 and SDXL. We will analyze their advantages and disadvantages. Stable Diffusion 1.5 is a model created in October 2022, so in fact in the world of AI it is almost antique. It is a virtual senior who however has not lost his strength. He has been working on VRAM for 4 GB and has been trained on 512, 512 pixels images. So, as it happens in life, the older man sometimes has a problem with recognizing the face in a large photo. In turn, SDXL, the younger brother, appeared on the scene in July 2023. This young man needs more VRAM than 8 GB, but has been trained on images in resolution 1024, which makes it more realistic in giving details even to these smaller faces. In both models we work differently, but do not worry. During the courses I will explain everything. And since not everyone has a computer machine for artificial intelligence at home, we will use the cloud on the RunPod.io platform. It is not free, but for a few pennies per hour, it will allow us to create hundreds of graphics in the highest quality. A perfect solution for computers like potatoes. Step 1. We start by setting up an account on RunPod. You will find the link in the description. You don't have to spend a fortune right away. The minimum charge is $10, and that's enough for a long time. Especially when you choose a graphics card costing about 30 cents per hour. Remember about additional disk charges. For $10, we can count on about 30 hours of work, which is usually enough for a week of tasks, and even more if we manage our time well. Step 2. Next, we move on to the template provided in the second link. This template will automatically install Stable Diffusion on your virtual machine. For now, we'll ignore other tools like Koya SS or Comfy UI, as they will be covered in other courses. Now, let's focus on selecting a graphics card. It's important to ensure we're in the community cloud, as Secure Cloud offers more expensive cards and a smaller selection. In the community cloud, keep in mind that interruptions in work may result in losing access to the card, so it's a good idea to save your progress frequently. From experience, I recommend the RTX 3090 or RTX 3090 Ti cards, both with 24GB VRAM, as they work very quickly. Once you've selected a card, pay attention to the disk space. If you plan to do a lot of work, increase the available space to, for example, 120GB. Otherwise, even 100 gigabytes should be sufficient. After entering all the details, click Deploy to start the system. The pod will now load and be ready. Step 3. Once the system is launched, we connect to our virtual computer. The most important ports are 3000, Stable Diffusion, and 4800, Jupyter Notebook. Here you will find the file system. 
We move on to generating stable diffusion images. Various tabs are available, each with its own application. Today, we will focus on generating images from text and processing elements in the existing graphics in the InPaint tab. We choose a model. At the beginning, only the base one is available. To find more, visit cvite.ai.com, a rich model database. Here you can choose a model for testing, e.g. Deep Blue. It is important to familiarize yourself with its description and license information. Remember that working on SDXL 1.5 models is different from each other. After choosing a model, go back to Stable Diffusion VIT or AI Browser Plus, enter the name and download. The Albedo model may also be interesting. If the system asks for API, generate the API code on the cvite.ai website and paste it into the Stable Diffusion settings in cvite.ai Browser Plus. Step 4. We create images using a prompt in English. SDXL is easier to use and requires less text for a good result. However, the 1.5 model requires more extensive descriptions, and so, for example, we can go back to cvi.ai.com and see what prompts look like for others. In general, it is a very good download. The image for version 1.5 contains a lot of text. SDXL is more understandable. An example may be a happy fox on the river in a cartoon style. We enter our prompts in brackets. Remember to specify the weather, conditions, object, style as much as possible. A good practice is also writing negative prompts, i.e. what we do not want. They generally improve the quality of what we do. A prompt that is to be more important can be put in a parenthesis. In addition, there is also something like the power of a prompt. If we want something to work harder, we can put a numerical value in the parenthesis. For example, 1.3 will mean that the prompt will have a power of 130%. Step 5. Sampling steps. So how many steps does our graphics have to take to create an image? In the case of the SDXL model, the recommended average is somewhere between 20 and 30. More is the growth of the form over the content. Instead of looking for a big car in the sky, let's stick to simple images. Those too complicated will escape us from the brush anyway. However, if you dream of an epic scene with many characters, prepare for a layered approach and remember, each layer is an additional time and effort. It is not an easy task, but rather an art that requires patience. And now, let's move on to resolution. Do you remember when I mentioned at the beginning that the SDXL model was trained on 1024 pixel images? Well, here is the dog buried. Generating images at a resolution of 512 on this model will bring us images of comparable quality to an unsuccessful culinary experiment. We can check it, and we can already see what is played. By increasing the resolution to 1024, we get the target quality. Of course, we can experiment with different resolutions, but remember that one of the values should not fall below 1024. Here we see a mistake. The second tail. Sometimes the generated image gets an unwanted addition in the form of an additional paw or tail, but calmly. This is just another stage of our graphic adventure. Playing with artificial intelligence is a bit like a date in the dark. You never know what will draw you. We can set more images in batch count, e.g. four, and then choose the only one. When the prompts are set and everything is okay, we are looking for something special. We can set even 100 here, go for a coffee, come back and choose the one that interests us the most. This is called cherry picking. Enjoy your meal. Step six, another element worth paying attention to is the CFG scale. It is responsible for the level of creativity and colors. It is recommended to use values between two and seven as it provides the best results. The lower values support realism, while the higher ones fit a more unrealistic, colorful style, 
e.g. for dashes or anime. We can check that at level 3 the colors will be more toned. If we set a higher value, e.g. move the slider to 18, the image will become oversaturated. It is important not to overdo it, but I also encourage you to experiment. The seed parameter is our seed. If we want to generate something identical, e.g. a specific image of a fox, we can check its seed by saving the graphics on the computer. By pasting this parameter in the right place, we get the same graphics. It is worth remembering this, because sometimes it is useful. Currently, we are looking for something with the trial and error method, so we will return to the value of minus one, which corresponds to randomness. As for the sampler method, the matter is more complicated. Some methods work faster, others worse, and some may not work at all. It is worth trying a few and comparing their effects. I encourage you to do your own experiments and draw conclusions. Generally, this default sampler method from the top will also be fine. Step 7. Let's go back to the example with the graphics that we want to correct. If we like the graphics, but it requires minor corrections, we can click on the paint palette. The graphics will automatically go to the in-paint tab, where we will be able to make specific corrections, keeping all the previous settings and prompts. If we want to remove an element, it is enough to manually paint this fragment of the image using similar colors, e.g. in the paint program. At this stage, I have prepared a picture that is simply painted in the paint program using similar colors. Thanks to the in-paint tool, we can mark a selected area and start a new generation. It is important to pay attention to a few parameters, e.g. Denoising strength determines how much our graphics will change. In this case, it is enough to set the value to 50%. It should be remembered that the CFG scale is not transferred from the image text. After using the Generate option, unwanted elements should disappear, but we will notice that the color still differs from our vision of a river or grass. Experimenting with denoising strength is the key. Now, it looks much better. Of course, you can also correct other details, such as these strange in-paint boundaries. When using the palette icon, we move our object, e.g. a fox, from right to left. After updating, you can still make a few corrections. If the border requires corrections, it is worth trying several times until you get a satisfying effect. Now it looks pretty good, although the fox's sight may still require work. We can move it from right to left, mark the eyes and make a few corrections. We add graphics that can be processed in programs such as Paint, Photoshop or GIMP. Colors and shapes are important. After pasting the hair, we can paint it and change the prompt to Happy Rabbit. Then we mark In Paint Masked, so that the program focuses only on the masked area. Increasing. Step 1 to 0.8 to create a new rabbit. After a few generations, we get a consistent image with our fox. We can still notice some artifacts by the river, but the general the image looks correct. You can reduce a bit denoising strength to improve the details. We choose the best version and we already have a complicated image with two objects that are consistent and have a cartoon style. Step 8. Finally, we go to save our work. All images are saved in the output folder in Stable Diffusion. If we want to continue working on the selected file, drag it to the PNG Info tab to extract the saved metadata. We can later send these parameters, e.g. to the image text, to create an identical graphic. If we want a different effect, we enter the value 11. To download all files at once, go to the workspace folder, open a new window and use the terminal tab. We enter the appropriate command to create a file that compresses our work. 
We can change the name and place of the save according to our needs. We have it. This is the end of the lesson. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. In the next episode, I will show you how to use lore and create characters from League of Legends in real life. Hey!